Here's how I rate martial arts effectiveness, legitimacy, ability to actually help you in any way. If you want a video on any of these specific martial arts, let me know. So let's start with Aikido, the Steven Seagal martial art you've probably heard of where they don't really have offense. It's like all defense and movement and they try and counteract you. So it looks like they've taken some things from like judo and wrestling kind of and like have some like good ideas of balance and hip control. But overall, everything you find in Aikido probably fits in like judo, wrestling, jiu-jitsu. There's probably aspects of it in all those, the good parts of it for the most part. Uh, fight me, Aikido masters. I don't care. So we're going to put this in C tier. I think it kind of fits there. But uh, the next one, Wing Chun, uh, the Chinese martial art that I'm sure you've heard of. Old school. I remember Roy Nelson was doing it as a joke, I think, for a while. Anderson Silva, maybe. There's countless videos of Wing Chun masters getting the crap kicked out of them by MMA fighters and, like, kickboxers and boxers. So I'm going to put it in uh, D tier. D tier. Every martial art, for the most part, has something valuable. But at what percentage of value? That's where we're getting into this. There's probably a, something from every single martial art you can take with you, but... Other martial arts have probably incorporated the good parts of other martial arts that are lesser known and less effective, generally. Next, we have Sanda, or Sanshu, like Chinese kickboxing. The most notable person that I can find who's practiced it on a competitive level, especially in the MMA world, is Kung Lee. He was a US champion with several medals. He was quite accomplished in it. And his striking uh, was quite good for his, his time in the UFC and strike force. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it in C tier, but potentially move it to B tier later. We'll see how the rest of these line up. But I think it's I think it's better than Aikido. I think Sanda Sancho is better than Aikido, but I don't know if it's good enough to go to B tier. Because we're gonna see who we put in B tier and it's gonna get a little interesting. But for the most part, Sancho is a decent striking art, but it's still behind several others that we have on this list that are far more effective and have surpassed it in a lot of ways and are much more advanced and in higher end. Okay, Taekwondo. Oh, Taekwondo is hard because again, it's, it's on the low end. I mean, it has no boxing ability or it, no admirable boxing ability. The hands of, of Taekwondo are among the worst of all striking arts. The uh, highest level Taekwondo fighters I can think of in MMA right now are Anthony, the, the Pettis brothers. There's a few others, but I mean, Valerie Lareda, who's really popping off right now on Bellator. But I mean, in all of them, I think you notice their boxing wasn't the best until they started training other martial arts, especially the Pettis brothers. Anthony really turned up his boxing training and you can see it. The boxing of Anthony Pettis, like the hands of Anthony Pettis and, and Sergio Pettis are not from Taekwondo. Duke Rufus did all that, and he did it with other knowledge. He didn't get that from Taekwondo. So, sadly, I think I'm going to put Taekwondo at C tier for now, but it could go to D tier. I think it's better than Wing Chun. I would definitely prefer to learn Taekwondo over Wing Chun. Uh, next, we have Karate. And we've had several Karate black belts and users of Karate in, in MMA. Some of the most effective UFC champions have used it. We've got George St. Pierre. We've got Lyoto Mashida. We've got Steven Thompson. We've got loads of, of, of high-level fighters, but it does fall short in some aspects. It actually has good uh, boxing. I don't know. I don't want you to go hand strikes. I don't know what to call it. Karate has overall really good aspects to it, but it falls short in, in a lot of ways. The biggest aspect of karate, I think, that makes it advantageous to learn is distance measurement. It might be the best distance measurement martial art there is, a good example of this is George St. Pierre. He's, he's been noted several times saying that the way he measures distance is largely from karate and it's helped him cover the gap between striking and grappling a lot and his ability to get in and out without getting damaged a lot. And I think most of us can agree that George St. Pierre got out of MMA with, without lots of damage. He had a few wars in there, a couple rough fights, only got finished via strikes one time. So he's, he's managed a really good, effective way of avoiding getting knocked out and, and, and taking serious damage. And I think in large part to karate. So I think we're going to put karate in B tier. It's, 
If it had a few more people, I think it'd be closer to A tier. It's close, we, we might move it there. But right now, before we go through the rest of this, we're gonna put Karate at, at B tier with a potential A tier. The next one we're gonna do is Lam, Lam, probably saying that wrong. It's a Senegalese martial art. It's a wrestling martial art. It's one a lot of you may not know, especially if you don't study grappling as much, but it is a heavy duty, rough, gritty wrestling art, mostly done in dirt in Senegal. And it is a super devastating sport. It is very high intensity, very high pressure. Now, it's not the most technical. There's not loads of people that have come from LOM to MMA and been wildly successful, but that more, in my opinion, has to do with infrastructure and talent scouting between North Africa and Central Africa and MMA. And it's, it's hard. We haven't had loads of African MMA exports, and I don't blame that for it. But if you've watched LOM, there's definitely really positive as aspects to it that you could see being very effective in MMA. I think it's got potential, right? I think LOM is, is a pool of talent in Senegal that we could see some good fighters come out of is untapped right now. I don't know how far it will go, so there's it's a little open-ended, a little vague, but I think the potential gives it at least C tier, but it could easily move up to B tier if it has some more exports to the greater MMA sphere. Before I move on on Lam on Lam, there is a guy named Umar Rugrug Kane. I've heard of this guy before, and he's a he's a Senegalese wrestler. He's from from Lam and he's really good. He's got some rough edges. He's he's very new to MMA, but he could be one of the first real talents from that realm to make it decently high in MMA. But I would say watch out for him if you're interested in LOM wrestling and in the general African martial arts, I think we're gonna see blowing up in the next couple years. So this is probably one of the most widely known martial arts for MMA fans. It's how the UFC kind of got started with the Gracies, but lots of other people did a ton to propagate and popularize this martial art. But the main thing is its effectiveness. BJJ is one of the most effective martial arts by far, and there's no denying it. There's some fundamental issues I'll break down in a second, but it is one of the most clearly successful martial arts in MMA with technique as the main driver of it. It's There's no contest. We saw Hoist destroy people with it. And again, they didn't know it. Now, if you've done jiu-jitsu with someone who doesn't know jiu-jitsu. That happens a lot, obviously. It's like you have a bag of secrets and they don't know any of them. But the point is, against other grappling arts and in MMA, it is so effective, it has to be S tier. It is gonna be among the greatest martial arts in history and is clearly one of the most effective. I still practice it to this day, love it, did it the other night. My neck hurts. BJJ, S tier, first S tier. We have Mongolian wrestling. Now, if you don't know about Mongolian wrestling, you need to go Google some Mongolian wrestling. That stuff is wild. They wear like a Kirka, like top jacket and like just little shorts or like Speedos. And like, I think they wear shoes sometimes. Not exactly sure. Sometimes it looks like they're in the dirt. Sometimes they actually do it inside like you'd see Sambo or Judo or wrestling. But Mongolian wrestling hasn't achieved the success of others. But I think what... Their traditional style of wrestling is is similar to folk style wrestling in America or Sambo in Russia in the way that it is a takeoff point for many other martial artists in a lot of ways. A lot of the guys that get good at Mongolian wrestling tend to go on to do judo and wrestling at very high levels in Mongolia. There's loads of judo Olympians and wrestling Olympians for Mongolia that have their roots based originally in the traditional Mongolian wrestling style. And it's very, very effective. And it's very, very high energy, very effective. And we could see a lot more Mongolian MMA fighters coming with this background very soon if it starts being popularized in the MMA channels. There's already some, but it hasn't really reached UFC level. But there's a lot of potential. So I think it should go, it's hard to put in, in C tier, but it, I don't think it's karate level. I'll put it in C tier only because it's it's like LOM. And I think it's higher than LOM because it has clearly led to more Olympians. Ooh, no, 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 no. We're changing it. We're moving it. We're moving it to B tier, a low B, like a B minus. Because karate's clearly above it. There's no question. Karate, with all its flaws, is definitely higher end. 
in terms of like what it's done in MMA. Now, which would I rather learn? I'd rather learn Mongolian wrestling. It's probably a more effective martial art if you just fought a karate guy versus a Mongolian wrestler. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying in terms of effect on MMA, I think we have to say that karate's higher. Mongolians, Mongolian wrestling, on the, it's on the up and up. Watch out. Well, everyone, everyone knows about Muay Thai. We saw a, sh a massive string of Muay Thai styled fighters come in the early to mid 2000s. And it kind of fundamentally changed how MMA striking was done and is forever changed. I mean, the leg kick, the biggest takeaway from Muay Thai, in my opinion, because it's its strongest attack, I'd say that or the knee, elbows coming maybe second or third. But I think the leg kick and variations on the leg, now other martial arts have had it, but the leg kick has fundamentally changed how MMA is fought and how people defend things. It's a different martial art in a way that a lot of the other arts are about movement and defense and, and boxing, like the hands. Muay Thai deviates from this a lot, and it really, really focuses on the kicks and the knees. But the way it's affected MMA also has to put it in S tier, the way it's, it's fundamentally affected the way the game is fought and its effectiveness generally, it's very high level. One thing I want to include in this is Lethway and the Kun Komai, I think is what it's called. The, there's other martial arts that I won't, I don't know exactly who's Lethway and the East Asia. You can see there's a similarity between Lethway, the, the martial art of Myanmar, like their striking art, where they have, it's similar, but they fight bare knuckle or with like ropes on their hands and they allow headbutts and it's only till a knockout. And then you have Kun Kamai, which is very similar to, if I'm saying that name correctly, it's similar to Muay Thai in that it's a striking art, but it has slight variations in how they approach the style of striking. And they're all unique, but it seems like there's a common ancestor among all of them. I don't know which one it is. Someone please let me know. I think it might be Lethway, like going back, might be the com like a form, a distant indo Lethway -ta Muay Thai thing going on. Uh, that kind of spread across the Southeast Asian area. But I just want to include all of those because I wasn't going to tier all of them because they're, they're similar, but Muay Thai is clearly the most famous. And if you haven't heard of these other two, go look them up. They're fascinating. Yeah, so Muay Thai gets S tier. Okay, boxing, Western boxing, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr., they're fighting again. Uh, Mayweather, Muhammad Ali, like, well, I mean, I don't know who to go on to. Lomachenko, like, there's tons of boxers. Boxing is one of the most effective styles of martial arts, period. It has the best hand striking of any martial art. I don't think anyone would disagree because the only thing you can use is boxing. Like you can only use your hands. And the sweet science, as people call it, is sweet. When people get to the top of boxing, it's magic to witness. And with the money and the talent pool of boxing, it has risen above many other striking arts to where there's so much money that they've developed the science of it so well that they're so high end leapfrogged other martial arts that might be more complete, but they're so effective at that one thing and the athletic level is so high that they're unrivaled in many ways. And their influence on MMA is, is undeniable. A lot of fighters that get good at Muay Thai will really focus on having a good boxing coach because that's where Muay Thai falls short in a lot of ways. Not that it has bad boxing. There's Muay Thai champions that have become boxing champions. But generally, that's its weakest point. And you'll see them really, really focus on that. And it fundamentally changes their games. And the head movement as well is something that boxing does better than probably any martial art other than maybe karate in some facets. And that I'd still say no, boxing probably has the best head movement by far. And it's just so effective. You have to put it in S tier. Boxing is clearly S tier. It's influence and success. And I mean, who wants to fight Mike Tyson? Nobody. Let's go with capoeira next, okay? The other Brazilian martial art that a lot of people don't know about. It looks like a dance fighting thing. It's, I think, in Street Fighter. I think one of the characters uses it. That's how a lot of people, I think, got introduced to it back in the 80s and 90s. It's fun to watch. And we've seen people can use it in MMA. But... It's not super effective in general, but its wildness and rhythm make it effective due to its like rarity and unpredictability. It's interesting and fun to watch, but I think long term against high level people, it, it has not a it, it doesn't have a large success rate because it's easily countered by good wrestling and and just being patient. Now that capoeira guys and girls can kick punch really hard, but if you can time it and just look for it, you can 
tend to get them down. There is this one Brazilian fighter who's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and a Capoeira master. So it's kind of crazy fighting them. <laughs> I remember there was a viral video of, of that guy knock someone out because they couldn't take him down. It had, there's there's a style mix that can work there, but it's it's unusual and rare. So I'll put it in, in C tier for now. Maybe it, it, it gets higher up later. Next we have uh, wrestling. And inside of this, I'm gonna include Greco-Roman, folk style, freestyle, the the three main wrestling styles most people will be familiar with, especially Western wrestling, but we folk and Greco are the most common worldwide. And then we've got American folk style. And this is by and away one of the most effective martial arts. It's up there with BJJ, it's up there with boxing, it's up there with Muay Thai, it's clearly S tier. Wrestling's S tier, yeah. Including all that Greco-Roman wrestling, freestyle folk style, just the intensity is unmatched. And I personally think probably the best martial art to learn, period. It's the best base for MMA. I uh, want to make a video on that separately about what the best base is and why, but I think shorthand, probably the best base, period. So yeah, S tier and maybe even like S tier plus. Wrestling could be S tier plus for me. Uh, next we have Sambo, which is the most well-rounded base martial art there is. People that come out of Sambo are some of the most well-rounded guys, period. It has bits of everything you can do all sorts of striking, leg kicks, boxing, spinning stuff, back fist, whatever. So you could do Taekwondo style, boxing style, whatever. It has all the forms of grappling you can imagine. You can do Judo style takedowns, wrestling style takedowns, submissions like Jiu Jitsu. It has a pin ability to pin like in wrestling. So it's so diversified. It might be the best representation of effective martial arts in terms of sporting. Kind of odd, It you wear like shorts like wrestling-ish looking shorts, like no-gi shorts, and you wear like a Kirka gi top, and it's always red and blue. It has the ability to use like the judo style with the grips and lapels. It's such a unique martial art. It's maybe one of the most unique martial arts there is in the world in a way that's kind of unrivaled in its well-roundedness and in usuality. Like it's, it's something special. And you know, Khabib's come from this, Fedor came from this. It's wildly effective. And I think we haven't even seen the best of its effectiveness. I think we have another crop of Russians, Eastern Europeans, caucus based peoples. They're gonna rise out of the, the next wave of young Sambo practitioners in the coming years. So be prepared to see that. Oh wait, why did I put Sambo? Wait, why is Sambo an A tier? Sambo should not be an A tier. That was a mistake. That's S tier. Don't know why I, okay. I'm gonna have to re-record. Sambo is S tier, that was a mistake. I don't know why I put it in A tier. That was silly. Yeah, so there you go. It's it's definitely S tier, clearly. Uh, uh, next we have Sumo. And I think uh, Sumo is one uh, I was talking about recently with someone. Due to the heavyweight limit in the UFC and most of MMA, it's never gonna really be there. I personally think that the UFC and MMA should open up heavyweight to any weight class. Why not? Heavyweight should be any weight. Don't know why 265 pounds. I, I get that, that most ath athletes tend to not be very high level after that point usually but i think sambo is an exception to that and it's interesting and i don't why not just if a guy can get there at 315 or 412 or whatever weight who cares but it's it suffers from the lack of actual ground grappling it seems it's very high intensity high athletic ability but no real ground grappling good interesting way of approaching takedowns it has like the striking kind of of like they slap like they're palm strikes, I don't want to call them just slaps. They're like, they probably hurt really bad. But it's, it's, I don't know what's effective as an MMA would be. It'd, it'd be a long shot, I think, generally speaking. But could be interesting. Bas Rutten did it. And it's got really good clinch work, obviously, from its takedowns. But probably C tier with some potential going forward. Uh, next, we have kickboxing, which I'm going to put in A tier. And the reason I'm putting in A tier, right, is I personally think kickboxing is maybe more well rounded than Muay Thai, and I, if I had to pick one to learn, right, starting out, like if I was like, which one would I learn? I'd rather learn kickboxing, like Dutch style, European style kickboxing. I think it's box, the pure kickboxing ability of it is much higher, it seems to me. But I think the influence on the greater MMA sphere is Muay Thai's and the Southeast Asian diaspora of martial arts, generally speaking of their striking arts. And, and Dutch kickboxing clearly is a derivative in many ways. It's basically a derivative directly of boxing, old style European kickboxing and Muay Thai. It's clearly taken from those three and kind of combined them. And it's very effective in that. But 
for me, a little bit below just because it's less, because it's been less influential. But we've had loads of great kickboxers that have come to me. I mean, Alistair Overeem, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. It, it's very, very good. Just a just a tier, a small tier below. Let's move to judo. Last one. <sighs> judo struggles from a few problems that keep it not at the top level. The main one being it's, if you were to take the main grappling martial arts that we have on here, wrestling, sambo, and, and BJJ, it's less effective than all three of those. And its biggest issue is to get the win and the goal, right? The goal of the sport, right? So to, however you get the win will sometimes in large ways dictate the effectiveness of the martial art. And in judo, you can win by submission, but the groundwork is very limited. And you can win by just taking people down in really crazy ways. They're effective ways, but they're crazy. And some of them are not the best takedowns for actually holding someone down and getting a good position to dominate them, right? Like some of Pons people land with like their, they land and they've given up their back entirely. If you use that takedown in MMA, unless you knock the guy out somehow with the takedown, you're screwed. The focus on the grips is so emphasized that the takedowns, unless you get really good at converting them to over-unders and collar ties and stuff like that, you're not super effective, okay? It, there's a similar problem in sports jujitsu that some guys aren't as effective because they rely entirely on the gi. Uh, that's why nogi guys tend to be more effective in MMA, or at least if they had a very good nogi grappling game along with their gi grappling game, so they didn't rely and were able to transition. Judo is the same way. If you don't develop a good way of transitioning some of these things or working that into your game, you're gonna struggle. There's been some really good judo practitioners, like R Rick Hahn is one of the big ones that came comes to mind. But that big hole in it has to put an A tier for me. The explosiveness and dynamism and athletic ability of it, like the high athletic ability of its practitioners, it's something that jiu-jitsu lacks a little bit. It's a little bit too relaxed in some ways, but its overall effectiveness can't be argued. I've always rolled with judo guys and they're fun and dynamic, but they like, it feels like you're facing a really good athlete with massive holes in their game. They'll go from having like blue and purple belt level grappling in some areas to being like a white belt in others and you're like, it feels like you've got cheat codes when you're rolling with them, like randomly. Like sometimes you'd be like, oh, this is a really hard roll. And then you get to a position you're like, they have no idea what they're doing. And it's crazy. Now, obviously guys that have started judo and learned it, like Travis, Travis Stevens is a black belt in both. That dude would terrorize you in all ways. But a lot of base or early on judo guys transitioning and some even later on their MMA career, they never really fixed those holes. And it's not their fault entirely because sometimes it's just habit but it's a problem systemically with judo, I think in terms of being effective in the greater MMA sphere. Yeah, here's the list. I didn't include everyone. If you go wiki martial arts, there's like 300 martial arts, but here's some main ones that I've seen talked about and some random fun ones. But generally, this is how I see it. I'm gonna put the PSD file for this list in the description. Make it, share it, let us know what you think. Tell me how wrong I am. Aikido should be S tier maybe. You're crazy, but you can believe anything you want. I hope you like this. We're gonna be doing a few more of these. Uh, the next one will be on weight classes, I think. If you have any other ideas what we should do tier lists on, or any other ideas for videos, let us know. Have a blessed day and a wonderful night.